Hello everyone, my name is Nuvola and welcome to another video. This week's video is the automatic moss farm. It works for Java edition. The better version of this farm will be uploaded next week. So if you're looking at this at a later time, I will leave a link to it in the top right corner. First, let me show you just how easy it is to operate. Now we are going to enter the farm from the front side of the building and I covered the entire farm up using brick blocks but you don't have to do this if you like to see the farm running. All you gotta do is flip this lever and the farm will start producing. Now I'll shut it off immediately but all of your items will eventually be stored in these chests where they are automatically sorted. It will even create some bone meal for you to feed your system with if necessary. Okay, so before we're starting, here you can see the layout of the build. And I will be building with smooth stone blocks, but this is mainly because it's easier for you guys to see how many blocks you will need. In the actual build, I would use brick blocks or granite blocks if I were you. We're going to start off at the back and we're going to count the third block from the back. So that's one, two, three. We're going to place a block right there and create a line of seven blocks. At the back of that, you want to create another line, one block higher, also seven blocks. And then place down redstone dust on top of all of these blocks. Now on top of the front row of redstone dust, place down pistons facing upwards. Like so. And at the back row, place down another row of solid blocks. At the other side of the piston, so the front side, you also want to create a line of blocks. And at both ends, create a glass placeholder for a bucket of water. Do this on both sides and you should end up with water on each of these locations. Now create a line of pistons at the back facing towards the front. In the end the pistons down there will move stone up in front of these pistons which will then push them out towards the moss converter. However right now you want to place down seven temporary blocks right here with some glass blocks on top and you want to close off the sides to make sure that nothing can escape. Also place a line of blocks on top of these pistons and place redstone dust on top of those. Now grab yourself a lava bucket, place it in the middle right here. This should flow down on top of the water and convert the water into stone. You can place down another row of glass on top of the lava to make sure that no lava will escape and nothing will be set on fire. Next you want to grab some oak trapdoors and place these on top of the glass right here. And open those. You can place a block on either side to make sure that nothing can escape. We will now waterlog these trapdoors. And if you do this with the first and the third one, the second one will auto fill. You can use that as an infinite water source to fill in the rest. You can place a line of blocks on top of these trapdoors as well. Place a line of redstone dust on top of those blocks as well. Okay, so now we are going to make sure that the stone generator, which we just created, will not go on indefinitely or 13 blocks but it will stop at the place where we want it to stop. For this we are going to create a wall of 9 blocks long and 3 blocks high. So it should start at the level of the trapdoors and it should end at the level where this stone will be pushed outward. And it should be 9 blocks long so that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do this on both sides. Now on the level where the stone is going to be pushed out, so the green layer here, you want to create a layer of obsidian to make sure that no stone leaves the area that converts it to moss. Do this on the 8th block, create a line of 7 obsidian here. 
Now let's get this stone generator going, shall we? Place down four blocks right here, two right there, another one in front of it, two right here with another one in front of that. Grab redstone repeaters and place these to the right on this side, and to the left on the other side. Now this part is important, you want to set this redstone repeater to 4 ticks, this one as well, this one as well, and this one you want to set to 3 ticks. Place down a redstone torch right there, and place down a redstone dust right there. It should start a loop. You can place a lever right here, and if you switch that, it should start looping. That's the main switch of the farm, so make sure that you can reach that. On the other side, you want to place a sticky piston right here, facing towards the farm. And place an observer in front of it. Now, what will happen when you switch this lever, is the loop will start, and the sticky piston will send out the observer towards the redstone dust, triggering the pistons. Those will push up the stone that was created when the water touched the lava, one block up. But right now, it's not triggering the pistons at the back, so no stone is coming out at the front right here. For this, we're going to quickly shut down the loop, and we're gonna go to the back right here. Now you want to switch this block out for a slab at the top half. You want to do this quickly because the water will run out and it will wash away your redstone. So there we go. Now next to this redstone dust right here, we're going to place a block. Place another block next to that. And then place two blocks going up like this. Place down a redstone dust right here, which should connect to the line. Then place a redstone repeater right here, and two redstone dust. Now the line at the top is also connected. So now, when we flip the lever, we should start seeing the stone getting pushed out. There it goes. As you can see, the pistons at the lower half will keep pushing, but the ones on top won't, because the obsidian is currently blocking more stone from being generated. Now we could delete these grass blocks right here. There you go, and there's another stone layer. Now because it's quite noisy, I'll shut that off for now. But this is basically your stone generator. Now let's work on the transport system of the moss that you're going to create. Start by creating a two block high wall at the end right here. And then below the obsidian, create a layer which will transport all of the items towards this corner. Now in the channel that you just created, you can place down a water bucket at the end and it should reach all the way towards the other side. On that other side, you want to place a top half slab and you want to replace that last block with a packed ice or a blue ice block. Next to this ice block, we're going to place a soul sand block because we're going to create a water elevator upwards. Surround that soul sand block with regular blocks and build up six levels. So this is the first, second, third, four, five, and six. You want to fill that column with water. All the way to the top. We're now going to create a water channel across the farm by placing a block right here. Create a channel all the way to the other side. Place blocks here as well to guide the water. And on the other side, 
we're going to place a wall which we'll need to make sure that the items are on this gap and they can be picked up by a hopper later on remove that last wall because we're going to place a double chest here to align the items over that gap and then place a top half slab next to the first wall you can delete the block right there should be a waterway towards the top half slab and then make sure that you cover the top of the bubble column otherwise the items will go everywhere if you extend this with one extra block you can place down a water source right here the water should go all the way to the end right here okay so next up we're going to create a system that will actually create the moss okay so now you want to get into the farm you want to grab yourself a hopper and from the fourth block where the wall starts you want to place a hopper right there that's the middle you want to place a composter below so the hopper is facing into the composter you want to place a solid block next to the hopper you want to place a piston next to the composter you want to place a dispenser below the piston and you want to place a hopper facing into the dispenser once items are up there and they travel through the channel they will get picked up by the hopper feeding into the composter this will create bone meal which is fed into the dispenser and on top of this solid block we will place a redstone dust and that in the end will be triggered in order to trigger the piston which through to quasi connectivity will trigger the dispenser down there all we need to do now is place a moss block in front of that dispenser now in order for items to travel through you want to place a packed ice block below that top half slab right here forgot to mention that sorry there are two more things we need to do now to make this farm work properly first we need to connect the trap door system which will flush the moss down towards the channel to the system down there and simultaneously connect this redstone dust to that system in order for us to create moss to do this the first part is to place a sticky piston next to the solid block right here with a composter attached to it we want to fill that composter all the way to the brim because it needs to give off a strong enough signal to light up all of the redstone on the other side because we are going to place a solid block right here behind this composter and place a comparator right there now when this sticky piston gets triggered it pushes out the composter towards the comparator which will light up and it will trigger the trap doors downstairs flushing the system now we are going to connect this system to the system on the other side and we're going to do that by placing a solid block next to this redstone dust so we're going to place another one next to it and then a top half slab right here so you should have this shape a solid block next to that one with a redstone repeater on top of it set to two ticks and you can place redstone dust on those three blocks so the signal should now travel up to this redstone repeater right here you can then place a solid block next to the redstone repeater with a redstone torch on top and another solid block on top of that now grab yourself some hoppers and face one into the redstone torch place two to the side of it facing into the other hopper and create a sort of roundabout in which all of the hoppers face into each other as you can see right here on top place redstone dust now inside of these hoppers you want to place one item it should stay in the hopper that you place it as long as the redstone dust is lit up now below this system next to the composter you placed earlier 
you want to place a comparator facing into these hoppers so with the two sticks towards the hoppers this will read once an item travels along the comparator and that will trigger a sticky piston which is at the back of this comparator which holds an observer that's facing the other way <laughs> which is facing up so the red dot should be below now this is it all you need to do now is fill the dispenser with bone meal to get it started and you should be able to now start the farm and see it working so let's try it out the flushing system is not working properly and this is because of this composter right here this composter needs to be right there in this formation I believe now we can fill that up and we can try again As you can see it's working, it's not very fast, but it's designed in such a way that when you travel far away it won't break. So right now this is working as intended. I'm going to switch it off for now and let's work on the collection system. Now for the collection system what I did and I will show you how I did it is I made a hopper chain from this last block we had downwards and to make sure that no items escape I want to place three blocks here so that everything gets picked up by the hopper you want to go down one two three four five six hoppers and then the lowest hopper should turn towards the left you want to place down one two three four hoppers then you want to make your way to the other side by placing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hoppers. You want to make sure that all of these face into each other so all of the items are transported from up there, down to here, to the left, down this way, to this corner, and then turn to the right again towards the front of your farm. And the last hopper should be below the obsidian. Now, if you do it like this, you should end up with four spaces, so four blocks behind those hoppers towards the side of your build. This should fit exactly. Okay, so once you have your hopper chain all the way to the end right here, I will show you how to build one of these automatic sorters. Because in the first one right here, I've sorted out all of my moss blocks. In the second one, the flowering azaleas. And in the third one, the normal azaleas. We will build a fourth one, which will store all of the moss carpets. And we're gonna start off by placing two chests right here. And then we're going to face two hoppers into these chests. So the nozzle should face into the chest. Now behind this second hopper, we're going to place a solid block. And we're going to place a comparator right here, facing towards the front. Grab a hopper, face it into this comparator. On the ground behind this comparator, place a solid block and attach a redstone torch to it. Now, behind this lower block, place a redstone repeater facing towards the front and place two blocks on top of it and one at the back of it place redstone dust on top this is your automatic sorting system and what happens is when you fill this top hopper next to the comparator with four blocks like this in these four spots and then add a full stack of moss carpets in this case you will notice that it starts emptying and it should stop at 41 see there we go 
Now, what happens when I give some more moss carpets to this hopper? You can see that the redstone repeater lights up, because the redstone dust right here lights up. The redstone torch is off. There it goes on again, because it has been filtered out. Moss carpets are right here. So, we did that for the moss blocks, for the azaleas and for the moss carpets. Now those are the four items that you get out of this farm that you might want to use. What I don't like to use are all of the seeds that come out of it. With those I like to create more bone meal for if this farm ever runs out for some reason. For this place a composter next to the top hopper right here. Place a hopper facing into that and a hopper facing into that hopper as well. Place two chests right here and hoppers facing into those and now whenever compost has been made or bone meal has been made it travels into the chests right here you're now all set up all you gotta do now is decorate this beast now for the decoration we're going to start off by placing four block high walls of brick all around the build Above the entrance you can place down an upside down stair on the third level and a brick block on top. You want to make your way around the entire build and on the fifth level, so on top of these brick blocks, you want to place a line of green terracotta. For the pillars on the side we are going to place three brick blocks, then a layer of green terracotta, then another layer of bricks finish it off with dark oak stairs. Now you want to repeat this on all sides of the build where we've indicated these places. At the back of the build we are going to place two huge chimneys later on. You want to skip those for now. You can just go along with the other places that we've indicated. Once you've done all of these pillars we are going to work on the sides of the build. We're going to pillar up from this position 11 blocks into the sky. You want to do that on this position as well. You want to connect those by starting on the 10th block. Move two blocks to the right, one down, two blocks to the right, one down and two blocks to the right again. Well, you want to do this for both of the compartments and you should end up at the back pillar. Widen these pillars with an extra column of blocks. You can place brick stairs, each other block on top of the green terracotta. Fill in the gaps with full blocks. Place full blocks on top of those stairs and then fill in those gaps with upside down stairs to create this nice little detail on the side. For the windows we're about to create, you want to end up with a shape like this. Place walls from the center downwards and on the sides. And you should end up with holes for the windows, uh, which you can fill in using grey stained glass panes. And you want to repeat this on the other side as well. You can now fill in the back wall of the build, which is very simple and just plain brick blocks. At the front side of the farm, we're going to add two more layers of brick blocks right here. Then for the entrance, place down three brick blocks, like so on these locations. A row of green terracotta on top. Some brick stairs upside down in the corners right here. Then another row of brick blocks on top of that green terracotta. And you can place some brick stairs on top of that, like so. For the front decoration, you want to start by placing a row of blocks on the top layer right here. And then we're going to create the big window at the front with two long side windows next to it. Here you can see me building it. Pause the screen if necessary. Now for the roof, we're going to make a dark oak trim along the side and it's a very easy one step at a time raise along the whole edge of the roof just like so 
end with a double block. You want to do that at the back as well. You want to extend this to the other side. And make your way down this side. Once you've done the other side, you can connect it up at the back as well. And of course, in the middle, right here. And you want to place every other block a second slab. Just like that. You can then fill in the roof using stone brick slabs and mossy cobblestone slabs. You also want to fill in the wall of the second compartment using brick blocks. Otherwise you will have an open sky window. It is now time to work on those big chimneys you can see over there. So you want to move to the back. You actually don't want to build them up like this because this is too close to each other. You want to build them on these locations. You want to start off by placing a brick slab in the middle right there and then pillar up 16 blocks. You should end up just as high as the dark oak slabs right there. Now when you're building up these 16 block high pillars you want to make your way into the roof a little bit and once you're there you want to place three green terracotta on these locations surrounded by brick walls. Build up two more layers of brick walls and then place brick blocks on each of the corners. Fill in the gaps using upside down stairs and then place another ring of brick blocks on top. Surround those brick blocks using upside down dark oak stairs. Fill in the gaps in between those using dark oak slabs. Place a layer of brick slabs. And you can finish it off by placing a hay bale right here with a campfire on top. Do this in both chimneys. There you go. Those are your chimneys. Final thing that's left to do is do some detailing around the build. You can place green frog lights with oak trap doors to stay in theme. Place azalea leaves all around the build to give it a more overgrown look. Replace a bunch of the brick blocks by granite blocks and polished granite blocks and of course make the interior look the way you like it to be. I've kept it very simple as you've seen in the beginning of the video but you can do it any way you like. Just make sure that you light everything up, also the roof to make sure that no mobs will spawn and you should be good to go. Enjoy your new build. Anyway that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, leave any comments for suggestions or questions you have and subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you in the next one and have a great day. Cheers everyone!